In this video, we're talking about how to find the length of an arc. And remember that an arc is just a portion of the circumference or the perimeter of a circle. So we're going to be using this formula always to find the length of an arc, where L is the length of the arc, M is going to be the interior angle measure associated with the arc, and then we have this multiplied by 2 pi r, where r is the radius of the circle. So in this first example, we've been told that the interior angle measure P is 90 degrees, and that the radius is 10. So what we want to think about here is if we have the radius from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle, that radius is going to be 10, and the measure of the interior angle P is 90 degrees. So if I go ahead and draw approximately a 90 degree angle, something like this, we're going to say that this is a 90 degree angle here, and so the arc we're interested in is the arc from one end point of the angle to the other end point of the angle. And everything in between here along the perimeter of the circle, this is the arc. So we're interested in the length of this arc right here. And in order to find length, we're just going to plug the values we've been given into this formula. So we're going to say the length L is equal to the interior angle measure, which we already know is 90 degrees. So we're going to get 90 degrees over 360 degrees multiplied by 2 pi r. And in this case, r is 10. We've been told that the radius is 10, so we can go ahead and plug that in as well. When we take 90 divided by 360, we're actually going to get 1 over 4, so this fraction is going to simplify to 1 fourth. And then instead of 2 pi times 10 here, we can call this 20 pi when we multiply 2 by 10. So then we have 20 pi divided by 4, and we can say that the length is going to be then 5 pi. Now we can leave the length of the arc in terms of pi. Sometimes you'll be asked for a decimal approximation of arc length, in which case you'll want to plug 3.14 in for pi. Sometimes you'll be asked for a fractional approximation, in which case you'll want to plug 22 over 7 in for pi. But in this example, we're just going to leave arc length in terms of pi. So the length of this arc then is 5 pi. Let's do another example here quickly. We have the interior angle measure of angle P. It's going to be 30 degrees. R is going to be, or the radius is going to be 120. So if we go ahead and draw in the radius here, and we say that the radius is 120, and then we have the angle measure 30 degrees. Let's say that 30 degrees is right about here, something like this. We can say we have 30 degrees in here. So the arc we're interested in is this arc right here with endpoints on the edges of the angle and everything in between. So the arc length is going to be L equals the interior angle measure, or 30 degrees, so 30 degrees over 360 degrees multiplied by 2 pi r, or 2 pi times 120. 30 degrees over 360 degrees is going to simplify to 1 over 12, so we're going to get 1 over 12. 2 times 120 is going to give us 240, so this is going to become 240 pi. So then when we take 240 pi and we divide it by 12, we're going to get length is equal to 20 pi, and again we'll leave it in terms of pi, but you could plug in a decimal or fractional approximation for pi if you wanted to. What about this example? Here we've been asked to find the degree measure of the arc given the arc length and the radius. So we're going to have to work backwards here a little bit. Let's go ahead and plot here our radius on our circle. So we're going to have our radius here, and the radius is 15. The arc length is 3. We need to find the degree measure. So if we plug these values into our formula for arc length, we know that the arc length is 3, so we plug that in for L, and we're going to get 3 is equal to M is actually the value we're trying to find. Remember, that's the degree measure of the arc. So we're going to leave M, and then we're going to divide by 360 degrees and multiply by 2 pi R and we know r is 15, so we'll go ahead and plug in 15. 2 times 15 is going to give us 30, so this is going to become 30 pi. And then because 30 and 360 are both multiples of 6, we can go ahead and reduce this fraction. 30 is going to become 5 when we divide it by 6. 360 is going to become 60 degrees when we divide that by 6. So we're going to be left with 3 is equal to m over 60 degrees multiplied by 5 pi. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 60 degrees to get it out of the denominator here. We're going to end up then with 180 degrees is equal to 
m times 5 pi. If we divide both sides by 5 pi, we'll get 180 degrees divided by 5, which is going to give us 36. So we're going to end up with 36 degrees over pi. And that's going to be equal to the degree measure of the arc. We'll go ahead and leave it in terms of pi. But if you do the math here, 36 degrees divided by pi, what you're going to get is about 11 and a half. So 11 and a half roughly is the degree measure of the arc. So we could go ahead and put in the line here. It's going to be a very small angle, maybe something like this. And this will be the arc here. We can indicate the arc. And then we could write in here if we wanted to. 36 degrees over pi is about the degree measure of the arc. And remember too that the degree measure of the arc is always the same as the interior angle measure here. So if we're asked to find the degree measure of the arc, we do exactly what we did here and solve for m. If we were asked to find the interior angle measure, we would just find the degree measure of the arc and then give the exact same value since the degree measure of the arc is always the same as the degree measure of the associated interior angle. And those are just a couple examples of how to find arc length.